2021 at 65K, right? So there's your high at 65K. Here's your high at 69K, okay? So it was a higher high, very clear higher high. Now look at the RSI, high, and look at that. So this again told me, and this is one of the reasons why I was able to call the high at 69K and say it was gonna go back to 20K, is because this is just one of the many factors that I had. In this video, Gareth will talk about what he thinks about Bitcoin's price going up, what yesterday's high means, and whether we could see a run into the $73 to $774,000 range. He will also talk about what happens if Bitcoin breaks a certain line and what that might mean for your investments. What is this famous wedge shape that Bitcoin is making, and what might this mean for its future? With high inflation and a strong economy this year, will there be more rate cuts? What is the Fed plan? Let's talk about these and other things with Gareth in this chat. 2021, right? I'm going to go all the way back here, and I want to just look at the RSI in 2021. Okay, so where are we? Here we go, in 2021. So in looking at the RSI, and I'm going to try to drag it in a little bit closer so we can really see, look at what the RSI was telling us going into the first high pivot before the drop. So in 2021, we had two pivot highs, right? We had the 65,000 high and the 69,000 high. Now, before, when you were going up here, you had a collapse down to 30,000. And did the RSI help predict that? And the answer is, look, high, higher, high, higher, high, higher, high. Look at that. Look at all these lower highs. And then what happens? Drop. Boom, down. Again, so the negative, this is called a negative divergence on the RSI, where you get lower highs on the RSI, but higher highs on price. Another thing that's really cool to look at is if we flip over to the Bitcoin weekly chart, right, and we flip over here, did you have a negative divergence after the two tops in 2021? And I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can because I really wanna make the point here, but look at this, guys. So here's your high in early 2021 at 65K, right? So there's your high at 65K. Here's your high at 69K, okay? So it was a higher high, very clear higher high. Now look at the RSI, high, and look at that. So this again told me, and this is one of the reasons why I was able to call the high at 69K and say it was gonna go back to 20K, is because this is just one of the many factors that I had. But look at the higher high and the, I mean, this is about as crystal clear of a negative divergence as you're ever gonna get. And then what happens to price? It goes from 69 back to 15 before finally bottoming out. By the way, you wanna see something even cooler? Look at this. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's look at the lows at 15K. Did we have a positive divergence? Because divergences work in both ways, all right? So if we look at this, right? Let's bring up this, all right? So here's, here's the low. This is the 15K low. This is when, you know, Sam Bankman freed, FTX, all that stuff was going on. And if we look at this, right? We have a low here, right? And a lower low here. But if we look at the RSI, look at this. It was upsloping. All right, so again, you had a positive divergence in RSI with a negative price drop. And again, that's telling you that at least in the short term, price was gonna likely turn up. And sure enough, price did turn up. So again, a little bit of an educational piece today on RSI. Now again, I wanna just preempt this and say RSI analysis is not an end all be all. It's not like I just say, oh, that's a positive or negative divergence, so I go long or short. But it is a tool that again is very, very useful when analyzing and using other factors. The key to a good investor or trader is finding multiple factors that all tell you the same thing. The more factors, the higher probability of success. All right, on that note, guys, we're gonna come over here to the wheel and make our spin for the day, and I'll tell you at the end of the show what question you guys just need to answer at the bottom of this video and remember you got to follow verified investing uh, on youtube or on twitter to be entered basically that's the criteria if you're not following and you win sorry no can do you won't get it let's spin away let's see what it is oh the one minute scalpel dr b's new course that is by the way this guy, he's come in here 
and he's blown me away with his knowledge on scalping the one minute chart. He is so accurate. For those of you in the live trading room with us, it is unbelievable. But again, this is an incredible new course that we'll be starting. We'll be starting to sell it next week, I believe. And again, this is a game changer. When you learn what this course shows you, it'll blow your mind. So congratulations, we'll do the draw tomorrow. And just don't forget, guys, if you're a sponsor out there that wants to sponsor this or, or Verified Investing, reach out to Lawton at Verified Investing as well. All right. Even though the price has dropped to $70,100, Bitcoin is still going toward a supply squeeze, which could lead to a crisis within a year. Bitcoin supply may soon be greater than Bitcoin demand. On March 1st, a famous colossal whale, who had Bitcoins from 2010 started 2,000 dormant Bitcoins across 40 transactions in a single block. Four days later, on March 5th, this entity made waves again by moving 1,000 Bitcoins from the same year. This is the third time in March that this entity has returned to reallocate 2,000 Bitcoins from 2010, marking another significant string of BT movement after the assets had not been touched for more than a decade. Dad Rich, poor that famous author Robert Kosecki has answered many questions about Bitcoin in the U.S. dollar, Declaring that he is a Bitcoin bull, he said that the cryptocurrency is the perfect asset at the right time, even though he admitted that Bitcoin could go to zero. In response, he said that fiat currencies like the US dollar, the British pound, and the Japanese yen could also go to zero, and he calls them giant Ponzi schemes. Point levels and factors for the day. So what do we have here? Federal Reserve President Christopher Waller will speak later today. The reason why these Fed speak speaks points are important is because Basically, we're at a point now where we see higher inflation, the economy's still doing well, yet the Fed last week said, yeah, we're still planning on cutting three times. More and more analysts are saying, well, maybe not. Maybe that's not the key. Maybe we're only going to get two or one or even zero rate cuts this year. So this is going to be really interesting to watch to see what he guides the market to. Remember, when these Fed presidents do speeches, it's often to guide the markets to where the Fed wants them to be. Okay, next up, Robinhood. Robinhood debuts a credit card triggering the stock to jump about 7% this morning. Now, you guys know how I feel about this. This is just more debt, more debt, more debt. As long as the economy is good, credit card companies do great. The problem is, is when credit cards default because the economy does bad, that it then re kind of formulates negatively on the underlying company. So it'll be interesting to see how Robinhood handles that if we get into a future recession. Number three, Merck. Merck jumps 5% after the FDA approved its treatment for a rare lung cancer drug. The only interesting thing here on Merck is that if you compare it to Eli Lilly, Eli Lilly is like double the market cap, but Merck actually makes more revenue by far than Eli Lilly. So again, what's the difference? Well, Eli Lilly has the weight loss drug, right? So that's the difference there. But I do think that it offers an interesting idea for these other drug companies that do much better in terms of revenue and profit profit to maybe be a catch-up trade in the future. Next up, GameStop. GameStop drops 20% after disappointing earnings. They also announced job cuts. So this is a classic example. And in fact, I was looking at the chart on Monday, I believe, and GameStop had a big rally. And to me, knowing that the earnings were coming out, I said to myself, there's a lot of meme traders here that are jumping in, hoping that these earnings are good. The problem is, is that as much as we might want a stock to do better, you have to look at competition. You have to look at what's going on with their business plan. And this certainly didn't come out very well for GameStop. So just remember that eventually you can, you can push stocks up. You can push meme coins up. You can do all of that. But at some point in the future, fundamentals actually matter. The use case for coins, right? Or the profitability for a company like GameStop. Lastly, late day sells. And this to me is the most important that we're going to discuss today. Late day sells in big name stocks the last few days are likely a result of rebalancing at the end of quarters, right? So at the end of quarters, if you have a stock that has gone up parabolic, a lot of funds, a lot of ETFs that state that we're only going to hold X amount of this, they're, they're looking at their portfolio, they're looking at the ETF, they're looking at their fund and saying, wow, this is now a huge percentage of our fund because it has gone up 
so much. So what do they do? They back it off. They unload some of that to bring it back within the criteria of ownership percentage in that fund. And so again, we'll go over some charts in just a minute that show this, but I think that's why you saw NVIDIA dump out late yesterday, SMCI, Meta. Those are all stocks that this quarter have had parabolic moves, so they've become overweighted in portfolios, and they have to be brought back down. That may continue today, so you may see continued selling, especially late in the day, on names like Meta or on NVIDIA. Okay. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. RFK JR, who is running for President of the United States, says that cryptocurrency is the best way to protect against inflation. He emphasized that cryptocurrency takes power away from the government and the monopolistic banking system, which prints money to enrich a small group of billionaires while making regular Americans poor. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more news, analysis, and thoughts on cryptocurrencies. Tell us what you think in the comments, and don't forget to like and follow for more fun videos.